Howdy friends, I'm Kevin Gilmore. I serve as the pastor at First United Methodist Church of LaPorte, Texas. And you, if you have happened upon this video, you are uh, looking hopefully for our Christmas Eve service from uh, 12 24 2022 well if that's you then you found it uh, this is our Christmas Eve uh, service for this year and so I'm so glad you found us I'm so glad you've chosen to join us in this online Christmas Eve service I hope you enjoy Merry Christmas God bless
Tonight is the night for which we have all been waiting. Our Advent preparation will now be completed by the lighting of our Christ candle. For unto us a child is given, unto us a Savior is born, and the order of the world will be upon his shoulders. With the birth of Jesus, our lives will be forever changed. We will be transformed by his model and message. We light this candle to represent that Christ is truly the center of our lives. Let us pray together. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. O oh God, let your blessing come upon our community, gathered here before you. Amen. Well, we are here. We made it. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. Did you ever think we would make it? My youngest child certainly did not. Every day has been, Dad, how many more days? Well, what a strange, strange couple of years it has been, hasn't it? Years like no, no, no other we've ever seen or, or lived through, at least in my lifetime. I think we'd all, we could all really use some Christmas this year. We could all really stand to rediscover Christmas. The Christmas story is a powerful story filled with wonder and miracles and very real life. It's the story of Jesus coming to the earth as the most wonderful gift of all eternity. As we have walked through various parts of the Christmas story these past four weeks, we have explored the intersection of Jesus in the lives of real people who played a role in his arrival. And we have seen that he brought hope, love, joy, and peace into their lives in very real ways. And he will do the same for us today. In our time together now, tonight, let's briefly trace our way through portions of this Christmas story again, highlighting all that it means that Christ is here and all we can to rediscover about Christmas in him. So let us pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we begin the Advent season talking about hope. When uncertainty surrounds us, the promise of Christ fills us with hope to carry on. Hope is the breath that keeps us alive. Hope is the fuel of faith and dreams and possibilities. Hope is that whisper of maybe, just maybe. It's the spark in the cold darkness that catches flame. It's the flicker of first light on a new morning. In the worst sufferings and atrocities and catastrophes of human history, there has always remained a flicker of hope. Throughout the history of the Jewish people, there was the hope of God's covenant. There was the promise of restoration and blessing through the Messiah. But time dragged on, and the nation was plundered. Its people were exiled and conquered. How long? How long, O oh God? 
was the cry of the ancient Israelite people as year after year, century after century passed. But there were those who kept hope alive, living expectantly, living faithfully, trusting openly and wholeheartedly that God would come through. Simeon and Anna were two of those people who encountered the baby Jesus. They had lived long, difficult lives. They had known loss. They had known disappointment. But they did not abandon hope. And when they saw the baby Jesus, they knew without a doubt that this, this was the Messiah, the promised one, the Son of God. They were ready and they were waiting for this moment. And they embraced the moment of this hope fulfilled with rejoicing and worshiping and spreading the news. The flames of their hope spread. Friends, how is, how is the flame of your hope tonight? Well, let me encourage you that no matter what you are facing, no matter where you're at, to rediscover the hope of Christmas. The second Advent, week of Advent, we looked at peace. The struggles of life are real, but the peace of Christ, even in our darkest days, is always with us. Of course, the announcement came in the dark of night. Of course, the angels began the announcement to the shepherds with the words, don't be afraid. Because of course, they were afraid. Because they were human. And there's so much in our world that causes us to fear. There's so much that happens that we struggle to understand. For the shepherds, that included these magnificent, terrifying, heavenly beings showing up in the middle of the night sky. For us, it's the normal pressures and disappointments and uncertainties of our frailty in a broken world. But in Jesus, the Prince of Peace arrived on earth and the angels proclaimed a new peace. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The favor of God is here. It's here with us, with humans. The peace of shalom, that Jewish concept of fullness and safety and completeness and, and wholeness, that, that shalom is available to us. This is the peace of restoration with God. It is the peace that settles our souls deeply. It's the calm acceptance that it is well with my soul, no matter what swirls and storms around us. It's my hope, it's my hope that we will rediscover the peace of Christ this Christmas. Those storms will come, we know this. Those winds may be howling around you right now. But let me invite you, let me invite you to step into the shelter of the peace of Christ. Turn your hearts, turn your hurts, turn your needs over to him. Then Sonny helped us to rediscover the joy of Christmas. We all have one of those days or weeks or years, right? Even then, Christ fills us with joy that defies our circumstances. King David wrote in the Psalms, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Sometimes that night can feel so long. Sometimes it's night after night after night after night as we try to carry on. Sometimes happiness feels so elusive and distant. Sometimes it pours out upon us like the eruption of the old faithful geyser. And sometimes joy just bubbles up slowly. But as we can re rediscover this Christmas, the good news of great joy that is alive in us through Jesus is the strength that sustains us. 
For some of us, Christmas is a joyful season filled with songs and celebrations and traditions and comforts. For others, the expectations of Christmas joy serve as a reminder of deeper pains and disappointments and the lack of all of this merriment that we're supposed to be enjoying. For most of us, Christmas probably is a, brings a mixture of both. It's my hope that we will all rediscover joy this Christmas season as we choose to rejoice. As we return our focus to Jesus, we can find his strength. As we pour out our hearts to him, even in the midst of our pain, he can transform our weeping into joy. And then last Sunday, we talked about finding love in our differences. There's so much in our world that drives us apart. The love of Christ runs deeper than our differences. It runs deeper than our differences with a flood of grace and forgiveness and unity. The desire for love is so dominant in our culture. We long so deeply to be loved. When future archeologists and anthropologists explore artifacts of our era, they'll probably conclude that love, that love was one of, if not the most important quality of our society. Our songs, our movies, our TV shows, our literature, they're filled, filled with themes of love, longing for it, celebrating it, mourning its loss. At Christmas, at Christmas, there's even this whole genre of, of holiday romance songs and, and Hallmark movies. We are captivated by love, but we struggle. We struggle so badly to love each other on individual and societal levels. Instead of a culture that exemplifies love, we are a nation in a world filled with division and conflict and hatred. Despite our best intentions, our broken human nature divides us. Jesus, on the other hand, is the bridge of love that unites us. He is the long-promised Messiah, sent because God loves us so much that he allowed his only son to be the sacrifice for all of our sins. And when he did, Jesus made the way for us to be restored into relationship with God. As we rediscover this Christmas, it is my prayer that we rediscover the love of Christ. The perfect love that allows us to experience complete acceptance by God and the perfect love that removes all of our fears. And as this love washes over us and fulfills us from within, I pray that it propels us to reach across the divisions around us, even to our enemies, with humility and forgiveness and grace. Wow, what a love. This is our God. This is our Jesus. Christ has come with hope, peace, joy, and love. Christ has come to change our world. Christ has come to change us forever. This is her, his arrival into our world as described by Luke. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. It's such a humble birth, such an understated beginning to life, yet such a normal entry into our existence. Human birth as a fragile, helpless baby. Jesus, he's one of us, able to understand everything we go through, all of our longings, all of our struggles, all of our pain. Yet Jesus is God. He is hope. He is joy. He is peace. 
and he is love personified. Here to restore these characteristics in us as a byproduct of restored life in a relationship with God. Friends, if you are struggling this year asking, where is Jesus, then let me offer this. Jesus is in all of our uncertainties, struggles, discouragements, and differences. Jesus is in our celebrations and in our mourning. Jesus is in our crying and in our rejoicing. Jesus is in our fears and he's in our triumphs. Jesus is in our losses and in our victories. Jesus is in our brokenness and in our healing. Jesus is in our sickness and in our health. Jesus is in our life, and he is in our death. Wherever you are this Christmas, Jesus is there. And he is working, and he is moving, and he is offering life and forgiveness. He is calling us to trust and to see beyond our immediate circumstances to his deeper, bigger broader, wider, higher picture. Jesus is in our world and Jesus is in our lives. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus is the discovery of Christmas. Let's run like the shepherds to encounter him this season. Let's worship and find renewal in his presence. Let's rediscover Christmas in the life that he brings to us. Merry Christmas. Christ has come. And Christ will come again. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again for joining us on this Christmas Eve, uh, 1224, 2022. I hope this service has been a blessing to you. I hope that 
we could be a blessing to you. Please let us know what or if we can do anything for you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forever. Amen.